This show is brought to you by Aramco's next stock offering is reportedly moving ahead, and Kuwait Finance House takes a stake in Ahli United. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Ramia Faraj. Saudi's plans for another multi-billion dollar offering of Aramco stock is gaining momentum with an upcoming deal expected to be one of the world's largest in recent years. Saudi has reportedly been working with numerous advisors for the feasibility study of the planned offering of Aramco shares on the Riyadh exchange. A decision could be finalized in the coming weeks. Aramco raised $29.4 billion when it was listed on the Saudi stock exchange in late 2019. Kuwait Finance House has obtained the Capital Market Authority's approval for the mandatory acquisition of an 18.3% stake in Ahli United Bank, Kuwait. The transaction is valued at $412 million. Both banks didn't disclose the total value of the deal, but it's reportedly valued at $11.6 billion. The acquisition makes the institutions one of the largest banks in the region with over $118 billion in assets and an increased presence in 12 countries. Qatar Energy has awarded a contract worth about $10 billion to a JV of France's Technip Energies and Consolidated Contractors Company. The contract is for the engineering, procurement and construction of the Northfield South project. Its scope covers the construction of two mega LNG trains with a combined capacity of 16 million tons per year. The LNG trains, together with further expansion of Northfield East, would boost Qatar's total production to 100 126 million tons per year from 77 million tons. Qatari banker Sheikh Jassan bin Hamad Al Thani has reportedly increased his bid to secure Manchester United from the Glazer family. Sheikh Jassan is in a bidding war with British billionaire Jim Ratcliffe after the pair emerged as the main contenders to buy the Premier League giants. Sheikh Jassan's bid is for 100% control of the club and he promises to wipe United's $1.2 billion debt. The Glazers are reportedly holding out for a world record $7.5 billion fee for the club before they agree to sell. Egypt has approved a new package of incentives and administrative reforms aimed at improving the business climate and attracting more foreign investment. The government issued 22 resolutions. They include reducing the cost of establishing new companies, curbing the restrictions on their incorporation, facilitating land ownership and expanding the issuance of the Golden License. This is in addition to providing an integrated and competitive package of incentives and facilities in the agricultural, industrial and energy sectors with regard to green hydrogen production. Lebanon is set to receive more oil supplies from Iraq. Under a new deal, Iraq will supply Lebanon with double the oil of a previous deal taking it to 1.5 million metric tons this year. Baghdad provides fuel to Beirut in return for health care and other services for Iraqi citizens. In a separate deal, Iraq will provide Lebanon with 2 million metric tons of crude per year. Beirut exchanges heavy fuel oil for gas oil to be used at power stations. A French investigating magistrate has issued an international arrest warrant for Lebanon Central Bank Chief Riyad Salama. Salama failed to appear for questioning by French investigators yesterday. They want to know how he amassed sizable assets across Europe. The investigators suspect Salame of building his network of real estate and banking assets with the help of a complex fraudulent financial system and extensive misuse of Lebanese public funds. Yesterday's hearing would have been an opportunity pr to press charges against him. To master the fusion process, private companies and government labs spent $500 million on their supply chains last year. That's according to the Fusion Industry Association. Fusion occurs when the nuclei of two light atoms, like hydrogen, heat to extreme temperatures, fuse into one heavier nucleus and release vast amounts of energy. Spending would potentially be trillions of dollars in a mature fusion industry, estimated to be sometime between 2035 and 2050. 
And Apple is set to release the iPhone 15 series in September, but insiders have leaked information revealing the potential new features and upgrades. Among them, Apple is likely to switch over to USB-C chargers for its upcoming iPhones. It comes after the European Parliament decided that mobile phones, tablets and cameras sold in the Eurozone should have a USB type C charging port by the end of 2024. Encouraging people to use a single charger across all devices aims at reducing e-waste. I'm Ramia Faraj. This is the Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.